It is a championship for the and Bedford the Bulldogs. Three in a row. And Johnson serves it in. Great header there, and it's a goal. Brian O'Brien shot. Bedford goal. Sees it about the 18. Sends it up and over and in. Big shot. Grace Crowder. Will kick. Happens back. Kick this up. It looks good. It is good. good. It's good. It is good. It's good. You are watching BCTV live coverage of Division I playoff field hockey broadcasting from Bedford High School where the 8-6-2 Bedford Bulldogs take on the 7-6-3 Keene Blackbirds in the preliminary playoff round here at Bedford's Bulldog Stadium. We'll begin the play-by-play -play shortly. In the meantime, enjoy the video action and we'll be back at you very soon. We are joined today by BCTV station manager Bill Jennings. I'm Pete MacDonald. Our play-by-play -play host Scott O'Donnell is delayed getting here, but uh, B Bill and I will uh, uh, entertain you uh, with uh, some commentary as the game begins. Thanks, Peter. I'm known as what they call the Phil until Scott gets here, so <laughs> should, should be a good game. These are two very good teams, uh, fi finished in the middle of the pack out of 16. Uh, Keen was here just a couple of weeks ago and uh, played uh, Bedford real hard. Uh, Bedford came out on top four to two. Keen came back in the fourth quarter with, uh, with two goals and with a little more time, they could have uh, made it a tighter game. Now, I understand that they did beat Keen earlier in the year, I think four to two. Yes, they did. While they were here. But Keen has since improved, and I guess their record has earned the right to be here playing Bedford this, you know, this yep, season. Yep, they certainly have, as Lydia Denon takes the ball. Upfield broken up. Yes, uh, uh, Keen actually uh, uh, had a big, a big, it wasn't a win, it was a tie over Exeter. And uh, that was that was huge for them. Uh, we, uh, we lost to Exeter, uh, but we tied Dover. So these are very evenly matched teams. And that's going to be a Bedford goal. It looks like that went in with uh, by number nine. Uh, that's uh, Lydia Denon, a pair of sisters on the field uh, for the Bulldogs. We've got uh, Lydia, who is a sophomore, and you've got uh, Nat Denon, Natalie Denon, who is uh, a senior. So uh, Bedford takes the lead early on, just a couple minutes into the game. That was excellent controlled passing, Peter. What do you got? Oh, he needs his volume up. This is called winged production, folks. Peter needed his hearing uh, improved by simply bringing up the volume on the headset. So, But I started to say that was nice controlled passing to set up that goal. W w Bedford? Bedford. Uh, there we go. Now I can hear myself and I can hear Bill. There, there we go. go. <laughs> Yeah, seat of the pants productions for sure. So um, Bedford plays really well and tends to win when they can open up the field and when their passes are spot on. Where they've struggled is when they bunch up and they don't get the passes off accurately. Um, they're, uh, we can almost look at every game that Scott and I covered and, and, and it's the same story. The, the, the games they win are the games where they open the field up and uh, their passes are, are, are spot on. Can you say that defense is really what kind of drives a lot of these real good teams? Absolutely. I can remember watching the BG game and their defense against this Bedford uh, field hockey team was, I think, the reason they were able to bottle up Bedford quite a bit. Yeah, Bedford's defense uh, has, has kept them in the in the running here for uh, for for uh, NHIA NHIAA uh, playoffs. Yeah, say that a couple times fast. The uh, uh, the rule is the top uh, seventy percent. So for this division, eleven teams made it in. Um, but uh, Bedford, uh, they've had, uh, I'm looking here real quick at statistics, they've had 52 goals for and only 28 against. And, and, and that actually, if, if you look at that, that's less than two games, ago, two, two goals a game. Yep. So their defense, uh, they, they have a great defensive line with McDonald, uh, Brooke Poirier, and, um, excuse me, the, the next, uh, Mia Katane. Those three are generally on the defensive line and uh, they have speed. Uh, they're very, uh, very tactical in their defensive play. And uh, they've many a game this year. They've they've held uh, they've held off the uh, the onslaught, particularly from some of the big teams that perennially win, right? The, the Dovers, the Exeters, the Winnicunnets. 
I'm just looking at uh, the lineup for Bedford. So this is a still a young team. They I'm looking at how many seniors they have out there. It doesn't look like there's too many seniors on the. I think there's three seniors uh, plus a senior manager, okay. uh, and uh, they've got actually a very young team. A very uh, their, their prospects in the coming years are very very good. Uh, these uh, these girls are playing. Uh, many of them are playing year-round field hockey on the club leagues. Uh, they've been playing field hockey for a long time, and uh, they're sophomores and juniors. Oh, excuse me, freshmen and sophomores. Uh, they've got a good squad of juniors that will, will finish up their their career here next year uh, that are also uh, solid as well. So Bedford has a good team. Well, they're putting pressure on the, uh, it's great pressure. Yeah, that was a great crack uh, by, let's see, that's, I've got to look at the numbers here real quick. Uh, that looked like that was uh, Tegan O'Donnell out there, midfielder, scrappy sophomore. Uh, she's got a, a few more years here at the high school, and uh, she's she's uh, one of the top goal scorers. This is what you like to see is they're not afraid to pass backwards, right? They, they have enough confidence right now. Uh, they, they're opening up the field. Uh, and this is when you know they're on their game right now. They're keeping the pressure on Keen. That's Tegan O'Donnell. That ball will go out off the uh, defender's uh, foot. Hey, we're hoping some of our viewers that are watching this online are, at, are, are on Comcast Channel 8 and 6, 1072. I've got to get my tongue working here, Peter. I was supposed to be behind the camera. But anyways, we, we hope you share the fact that this game is being broadcast live, and it is available on uh, our YouTube channel, that's Pepe Community Television, as well as online if you have a... You know, uh, our website is BedfordTV.com. Just type that in and it'll pop up. Bedford Community Television on our YouTube channel. Just type in Bedford High School Girls um, Field Hockey and it'll pop up. Absolutely. And I have the app on my phone and I always recommend folks get the app, download it. Uh, no matter where you are, you can keep up with whether it's your your student athlete or friends uh, that are playing. Yep. Uh, it's, uh, it's a great, uh, it certainly has changed, Bill. I've been working with you as a volunteer probably close to 15 years. My oldest is almost what 22 so I started following there's a nice save by the yep. keen goalie the keen goalie uh, just, just to finish up that one thought was uh, uh, working you working with you for a long time uh, as a volunteer and and uh, BC TV certainly has come a long way since when I started with you and it was on, everything was on tape. There was nothing live, There was right? nothing live. And now you guys are live all the time. You're covering so many uh, high school athletic uh, events. Uh, you've really made a point to make sure you cover the girls' sports, which is terrific. Uh, obviously, we're going to cover hockey and we're going to – boys' hockey. And we're going to cover uh, and girls uh, hockey. football. But you've, you've taken on the reins as far as making sure the girls get the equal coverage, which is wonderful. Yeah, we find that it's that's very, very important to uh, just – expose all the teams because we have some great athletes here and it's in and, and girls athletics are just as important as any part of athletics in any program out there boys girls that make any difference look at that is great 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 goaltending That was Eloise Montagano, and she, she drew a corner there. So for those that don't know anything about field hockey, which was me just a couple of years ago, uh, if, uh, me now. <laughs> you know, uh, a corner is a, is a penalty where uh, it's, a, it's a huge advantage for Bedford right now, where they're going to have, um, uh, they're going to have, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine players on the field. Um, Keen will only be allowed five or four in the net. And uh, uh, it's a great opportunity. It, it has to happen fast. They got about three seconds to pull off a shot before the onslaught comes. But you can watch it develop. McDonald's going to do the insert right now. That's over to Tegan O'Donnell. And I didn't see who tipped it in, but I think it was certainly a shot from uh, Matt Denon. And we can tell by who carries the ball up. Who's that, Steve? Was it 22? 22. So Nat Denon. That was some slick passing. Yeah, Natalie, a senior. Uh, she's had a great year. 
multiple goals uh, in, a, in a good spot there. This is how the, the Keen game started out uh, last, uh, well, two weeks ago when we played them. And uh, we, we went up, I think, three or four zip. And Keen came back in the fourth quarter uh, and, uh, and scored two fast goals and made it a game. As they say, you know, the two, the two game lead is the worst lead you want, right? I think that's the yep. old adage, right? So, but great, great, uh, great goal by Nat Denon. That it was. Do you notice my analysis? My quick one line? That was a slick pass. That's my extent of being able to call the players. I so hopefully Scott is on his way to uh, <laughs> add some professionalism to this broadcast. Peter, I will go on and say one thing. You were talking about us covering a, a number of, you know, all the sports, both uh, both the girls and, and the boys. And we've really enjoyed it. But we're only as good as the broadcasters that are willing to come out to help us. And Peter, we're not covering this unless you and Scott you know, jump forward as volunteers to make it happen. And I know you guys have really enjoyed yourself. Peter, you're a little shy getting behind the behind the mic initially, but now listen to you. <laughs> listen to your golden pipes. Yeah. Anyways, we'll get back to the game so you can call it. Yeah, we're fortunate in f great defensive stop there by Brooke Poirier. Gets it out of the circle. It still stays in the circle. The circle is where you want the ball. It's the only place in field hockey where you can score a goal. You have to have the ball in the circle. It's 16 feet out from, six, excuse me, 16 yards out. I believe it's the red line or the red semicircle around the net. Roughly the 16 yard line. And uh, Keen earned themselves a corner. So now we're gonna see uh, Keen have an advantage. said, Peter, that 2 nothing score kind of leaves him close, so sounds like we've got a great team following here. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that was a terrific goal. I'm looking yeah, we, 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 we're looking ball. at the replays right here. Oh, there you go. This is the playoff, Pete, so we, we, we're showing replays. replays. <laughs> yeah, the... Who's the goal? Eight. So that was a, uh, a very nice corner goal by uh, Harper Zalaski. She's uh, a sophomore forward for uh, the Keene Blackbirds. And as a coach, that's what you want to see. You want to see corners converted to points because it is really the second best opportunity for, uh, for a score. It gets tricky in the corner circle too in field hockey where um, that ball cannot touch any part of anybody's body, right? So your foot anywhere, right? So, so even a minor thing where it taps the foot of another player, the ball taps the foot of the defense, it becomes a, a, an advantage in a corner for you. So a lot of teams, the ones that are really playing heads up, and I've seen that with Dover particularly, if they can't get a shot off, they're going to try to tap the ball into uh, Bedford or their opponent's foot, and they, they get a corner. It can be intentional. It doesn't have to be by accident. Uh, it's, a, it's a whole strategy, but uh, that's just how much the corners, as you've seen now twice, are, uh, are a real advantage. Right on top of you, Pete. Let me hear you. How's that? Am I sounding a little better? Yeah, now? you sound great. So we got Brooke Poria, who was just an outstanding defense uh, defense person for uh, for uh, for Bedford. Fast, just heads up all the time. Here goes Nat Denon again, number nine. Over to uh, Brooke uh, O'Donnell. Ooh. Brooke is fast, and when she gets the ball and she gets some speed, she can do things. Nice clearing pass by the Keen defense. As a reminder, you're watching BCTV's live coverage of Division I playoff action. Bedford Bulldogs taking on the Keene Blackbirds here at Bedford's Bulldog Stadium. The winner of this game moves on to the quarterfinals, which will be at Dover. That will be a tough game for either one of these two teams. 
and the uh, team that doesn't come out ahead on this uh, this game will uh, end their season. This is elimination playoff. Keen's doing a good job now, uh, keeping the ball out of their zone and moving it into Bedford's zone. There we go. I'm not sure what that, that might was. have been an illegal stick, perhaps, or I don't. I didn't see a foot call. It might have been an illegal stick. Again, that has for somebody that's a real novice on this. That stick has to be handled at the point up, point down. Well, you, can only, you know, the ball can only hit the flat side of the stick, and you can't obstruct the opposing player with your stick. Unlike hockey, where you can jam them up yep. with the with your stick. Uh, there's yep. none of that allowed here. So uh, I think that's what happened in the, the last play. Good job by Tegan O'Donnell to break up that play. Remind me to bring binoculars the next time so we can pick out these numbers. I know. <laughs> Scott, who normally calls the games, he's, he's very good at, uh, at picking out the numbers. He knows many of these players yeah. anyways as he, he coaches uh, for, for uh, for Seacoast, he's, he's seen these girls come through the league, the club league. To check to see if, um, pressure, pressure. Scott, if you're out there, we could use you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Peter, you're doing an outstanding job. Oh, my. So as a color analyst, I try to step, step into your role, and I am nowhere near what you're oh, no, doing. You're this. <laughs> One of the things that I was reading about the Keene team, and I, that's going to that's gonna end the first quarter. So uh, with uh, one quarter done, it's uh, the Bedford Bulldogs two, uh, the Keene Blackbirds one. They're, they're both playing as expected. They're playing each other tight. And uh, this is anybody's game right now. Which is what you like. I mean, we've been covering a lot of football, and both Andrew and I and our broadcast team are just looking for a competitive game, and we're not seeing them. Bedford is just blowing away the competition. Uh, but we're all concerned about them running into some stronger teams when they get into the playoffs. But enough about football. Let's get back to field <laughs> hockey. So, well, speaking of, so speaking of BCTV, one? next broadcast, you guys have a lot of games coming up. We do, and I, I do want to let everybody know that's uh, listening that any of the Bedford teams that are in the playoffs, we do roll out our replay. We don't have replays uh, for a number of different games, uh, only because it's a manpower issue. Uh, but we have a Cracker Jack and uh, Dale Bird and Dill has a, a schedule that uh, allows him to come on board with us on Friday evening, sometimes Saturday, the playoff games. And there's nobody better than, than Dale that can do the playoff work. And we really enjoy having him back there at the studio. So it's just not us out here in the press box. There's that guy back there that's making things look good with uh, with replay. So every playoff game, we will have replay. So um, I hope you folks are enjoying it. Um, so what do we got here? I, I happen to mention earlier that we are streaming currently through our website on our Xfinity Comcast channels for those TV viewers and certainly through our um, online apps. So let me just talk about BCTV's live channels and on-demand contact are now easier to access at your fingertips than ever before. Bepi Community Television is available for free download on Apple, Apple iOS, which you have, Peter, and Android did. Download the Community Television app from your app store today. So Androids, you go to Google Play, and for the Apple, you just go to the Apple Store. So that's one PSA out of the way, Pete, to kind of fill it. Maybe I can get a second one in here, but uh, I think uh, I'm just going to say that our next broadcast, the BCTV broadcast, 
will be on Thursday, October 9th, this Thursday. It'll be the boys' soccer versus Bishop Garten. That's at 7 p.m. And they will be down in Nashua in our sister station, um, ETV 99. Pete Johnson and his crew will be sending it back to us. And we will have that on our BCTV channels and streaming on our website as well. Do I have that correct, Andrew, who is our sports director and... Oh, it says boys soccer versus Bishop Girton. Oh, you want to talk? Oh, wait. Yeah, we have. Well, it's not here. Where's my read on this? I've got to have to go back. Let's well, get back the, to the who's game the, who's and I'll get the back to my editor, read. Right? Who's I the know. copy editor, right? I know. editor. Perfection. We try perfection, Peter, but we just have fun when we can make fun of ourselves. <laughs> So action underway in the second quarter. Bedford has a lead two to one. And we are just underway about 30 seconds. Go after the ball. I was reading about the Keen, uh, the Keen team actually in, uh, in the newspaper and they were calling out uh, the goalies for, uh, goalkeepers for, uh, for Keen. It's a nice uh, pass broken up. And equally nice by Bedford, Tegan O'Donnell once again. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. Peter McDonald, we're in the middle of some action here, but now we have the man with the golden pipes. Scott, I'm gonna turn this over to you and I'm gonna take a step back and welcome. As we're back underway in the second quarter, 2-1. Bedford up over Keene. Keene tries to clear the ball. Davidson knocks it down. Wolf trying to find O'Donnell. O'Donnell gets a body call against her, so it's going to be a Keene ball. Free hit. Big lift up the field to the 40. Amelia McDonald's there. Comes back the other way for Bedford. And Keene wins that battle, advances up the field. Brooke Poirier intercepts from the 35, drives the ball downfield, catches Den and Den with a beautiful one-time touch pass to Davidson. Davidson up across the 30, tries to lay it out. Lay it out. Den and gives chase, gets into the circle, crosses, gonna get a foot call, going Keene's way. Ball will come back out about the 12 yard line. Keen with the free hit. They go to clear. Big drive up the field. Bounces all the way up to the 40 where Denon gathers and nicely back to Katane. Katane from the 50. Far sideline. Tries to advance it up the field, but it gets intercepted by the Keen player. Montagano. Gets a call her way. Keen player knocks it down, comes back the other way. Emma Potrovich tries to give chase. Brooke Poirier's there, knocks it down. Again, the ball goes back and forth around the 50. As Sophia Miller tried to get it for Keen. Ball comes up to Grace Wolf. Grace Wolf, quick pass up to O'Donnell. O'Donnell takes the ball to 25, quickly up across the 20, finds Denon and Davidson down low, tries to go to the goal mouth, ball gets knocked around and out of bounds. Waiting for a call from the referee. Referee explaining the call to the players on the field, consulting with her counterpart, and it's gonna be a Bedford ball. That ball should come back out to the 25, where Montagano will set up. And play will get back underway. Montagano for the Bulldogs. Tries to go down low. Ball does bounce up. Grace Wolf towards the net. Shot on goal. Right pad save by the Keen goaltender. Good scoring opportunity there as they quickly 
turn that play. Free hit. Balks him up the field. Montagano knocks it down. O'Donnell moves outside, one-handed, up across the 15, spins into the goal mouth, tries to catch Kylie just too hot for her to handle, and out of bounds. Another nice scoring opportunity for the Bulldogs. Keen will take the free drive, try to get it upfield. Denon's there, Denon sp spins, gets it away. Over to Grace Wolf. Grace Wolf tries to advance it. Montagano knocks it down. Advance the ball towards the goal mouth, out in front. And there's gonna be a foot call going Bedford's way. We're gonna have a corner for the Bulldogs. Yep, just looking at that replay just off the back of the foot of the Keen player. Den and sets, re inserts up top to Amelia McDonald. McDonald, big drive right into the goal mouth. Rebound, Davidson. That's him. Bulldog score. Bedford goal. Sydney Davidson, senior forward, puts it in the back of the net. Bulldogs go up 3 1. Beautiful insert. McDonald got all of that ball as she drove it hard to the net. And Davidson just waiting on that rebound like she's done all year. Leading goal scorer for the Bulldogs. Gives them a 3-1 lead. Denon, far side, tries to advance the ball up across the 45. Call's gonna go Keene's way as they shoot the ball up the field, but Amelia McDonald's there again. Goes far sideline to Katain. Katain working the sideline, trying to get around those Keen players. Ball pops up, Denon gives it a try. And ball went out of bounds off a of Keen player. So Denon goes far sideline, tries to catch Maddie Kiley up at the 40. Battled for along the far side of the field. Keen's gonna win the free hit call. Montagano knocks it down, finds O'Donnell. O'Donnell tries to sprint up the field, gets knocked down again. Sophia Miller with a beautiful 360 move, comes up and nicely stick handles across the 40, finds her teammate, Olive Thatcher. Thatcher directs it up into the shooter circle, but once again, McDonald is there, gives a beautiful pop move over the top of the stick of the Keen player trying to clear and does as Montagano comes in and gives support as well. Thatcher back into the shooter circle. Brooke Poirier knocks it down. Keen advancing, but Poirier quickly out of the shooter circle. Finds Denon on the run up across the 40. Denon finds Davidson. Davidson gives chase and just out of bounds. Nicely defended by the Bulldogs and nice passing as they exit the zone. On the inbound will be number 20, Sarah Weber for Keen. Gets the ball in. Lydia Denon's there at the 50. Miller grabs it, spins, tries a stick handle by Montagano. He's gonna win a call. Big lift from Miller up the field, but Amelia McDonald's there at the 20, knocks it down nicely. Beautiful stick handling. Slides it near side and out of bounds off number five, all of Thatcher's stick for Keene. So McDonald for Bedford on the inbound. Drives it hard up the field, finds Grace Wolf. Grace Wolf tries to advance. Davidson gives chase, pops it up to O'Donnell. O'Donnell one handed up across the 25, quickly in across the 10. Tries to make a move, looks for Denon, gets it to Denon. Another give and go. O'Donnell with a quick spin shot, doesn't make it through to the net, and Keen clears it and slows the play down. Another great offensive opportunity there, Pete. Wolf into Montagano. Montagano, quick stick handle left and right. Tries to find O'Donnell. O'Donnell gets to it, gives a big shot just far right of the net. Got deflected by a keen defender there. 
That's going to still be a Bedford ball. Coming back out to the 25 as Montagano sets and goes quickly. Montagano stick handles around one keen defender. Lifts it in the circle. In the goal mouth, Davidson tries to get a stick on it but can't. And the Keen goalie played that well, really shutting down the angle there. So there wasn't a, a goal scoring opportunity. From the 15. Keen starts to advance up across the 30, gets the benefit of the call. Miller for Keen from the 45, tries to find a teammate sideline. And they're going to call another foul against Bedford. It's going to be another free hit for Keene. Number 11, Avery Allaire sends it upfield, but McDonald is there, goes far side, gets the ball out of danger and back out across the 50. Keene will inbound. They drive it hard, right back in. McDonald knocks it down with a one-touch pass trying to find Wolf. But clean it, Keen intercepts. Now McDonald again. Another great defensive play. Slowing the Keen player down. Montagano safely starts to carry. And gonna get a foul called. It'll be a free hit. Bedford should be about the 25 yard line, and it is. McDonald from the 25 up to Montagano. Montagano tries to advance. Denon tries to help as it's the far sideline, number 24, Ella Rice, hanging tough, trying to get the ball up to her teammate Miller. But now up across the 50 comes Kylie as she finds Lydia Denon far side. Davidson from the 10, Davidson back into Denon. Denon one touch into O'Donnell, O'Donnell goal line, slides it in to Kylie. Kylie with a shot on net, nice save by the keen goalie Montagano. Another drive to the net and deflected by O'Donnell and just out of bounds. Another great offensive chance for the Bulldogs. Keen has uh, Williamson in goal, and uh, she was actually in an, in an article after uh, in the Keen Senate after the uh, Exeter game. They ended up tying Exeter, which is huge. Um, and uh, she kept him in the game, and she's had some great stops today. It certainly has. Katane slides it back in. Wolf with another nice one touch. O'Donnell between the legs of the defender, tries to rip one, bounces up, doesn't get enough on it as it bounces around. Yeah. Inside the shooter circle, ball pops up off O'Donnell. It's going to be a free hit for Keene. Drive the ball up across the 30. Katane slides it right back in to Montagano. Montagano finds Kylie. Kylie into the shooter circle. Tries to advance. There's going to be a call on that. It looks like Bedford is going to be awarded another corner. The, sim the sign from the referee was interference. I'm not sure if that was third party or I'm gonna go with interference. Yep, I think so. McDonald from the goal line sets as the Keen players put on their masks, waits for the referee's signal. Kylie top of the circle along with Montagano backed up by O'Donnell, ball inserted by McDonald. Finds Montagano, Montagano over to Kylie. Kylie tries a one-timer, just doesn't get it. And the ball comes out across the 20 and the 25. O'Donnell gives chase, bodies the keen player. It's going to be a free hit. Yeah, somebody just got carded there. Yeah, O'Donnell with the card, a little too aggressive. McKenna Nelson is going to have a free hit for Keen from about the 35 yard line. First power play of the game goes to Keen. Nelson sets, advances the ball up across the 50, finds her teammate. Number three, Tessa Pearson comes up across the 10, but Amelia McDonald is there again, collects the ball and sends it nicely off the backhand downfield. Lydia Denon, Lydia Denon near sideline, tries to get Davidson on the go, just out of her reach. Grace Wolf back to Montagano. Montagano trying to stick handle through two keen defenders. Controls the ball, looks with a backhand lift, finds Davidson up across the 50. 
but out off the stick of Davidson. And referee's going to call that Bedford's way. It's going to be an inbound by Grace Wolf. Wolf, nice pass up to Lydia Denon. Knocked down there. And 21, Sophia Miller comes charging back up into Bedford territory, up across the 30, up across the 25. Tries to lay it out for her teammate, Harper Zalaski, but just out of her reach. And ball goes out of bounds. That's going to come back out to the 16 for a free hit for the Bulldogs. Poirier quickly tries to advance it. Zalaski's there, knocks it down. Miller gives chase. Montagano comes back, collects it, finds Wolf near sideline. Wolf tries to catch Davidson. Ball just unluckily pops up over her stick and out of bounds. So number 20, Sophia Weber inserts for Keen. Over to Avery Allaire. Allaire tries to go down to the goal line, but that'll be out of bounds. And that'll be a Bedford free hit from the 16. Poirier sets from the 16, just about a minute left on the clock in the second quarter. Finds Wolf. Wolf to Davidson. Nice zipper pass right up to the 40. Lydia Denon with a nice pass up to Kylie. Kylie with speed. Chips it up over the defender stick into the shooter circle. Cuts towards the net. Backhand. Nice save by the Keen goalie. Davidson gets the rebound. Another shot. We're going to get a corner call for the Bedford Bulldogs. Great offensive action out there. This will probably bring us to the end of the second quarter with about 30 seconds left in the clock. O'Donnell checks back into the game just in time for the corner. So it'll be a full contingent for the Bulldogs with the opportunity to execute and get a goal here before half. As Amelia McDonald goes down the goal line, waits for the referee's signal. Kylie and Montagano again up top. Inserts, find Montagano. Montagano back to Kylie. Kylie, one timer. Big shot gets deflected, deflected. by a keen defender and blocked by the goalie. A yeah, great uh, deflection there by number 10 on Keen. That's uh, Emily Antozovic. Well, well executed. Unfortunately, it just popped up off of Kylie's stick. And here we are, two quarters played, 3-1, Bedford Bulldogs lead. Certainly have all the offensive opportunity here going their way and the momentum going their way, Pete. They sure do. I was commenting on that with uh, with Bill earlier. Uh, they've compared to, I looked at the Salem game, which was a tough game, a tough loss for uh, the Bulldogs. They seem to be really clumped together. Granted, they're playing on grass, which is not their favorite turf, obviously. Um, they, they came out, started this game, and they continued it. They've opened up the field. They keep the field open. Their passing is crisp. Uh, and when that happens with Bedford, uh, they they tend to come up uh, uh, more often than not with the win. So, uh, so far, so good for, for the Bulldogs. On the Keen side, uh, the goaltending, you know, I, uh, I as I mentioned, uh, they, they just uh, do a fantastic job stopping shots. And, and Bedford certainly has had a number of shots. Uh, and Williamson is known for that. Certainly. So we're going to take a quick break here, and then we'll be back with uh, second half action. Okay, we're back with uh, Bulldog playoff field hockey. About to begin the second half. Bulldogs lead three to one. Scott, uh, this game, three to one. <laughs> we watched uh, Keen two weeks ago score two very fast goals at the end of the game, uh, and uh, although they didn't close the gap, uh, they certainly are capable of it. So uh, we got a full half of uh, field hockey ahead of us here. Yeah, this game is far from over, Pete. 3-1 at the half, uh, anything can happen. You know, Keen gets one, they're right back in this game. You know, they say the most dangerous lead in all of sports is that 3-1 lead, right? Yep, absolutely. Because momentum can change a lot of things. So, <clears throat> you know, Keen comes, gets on the board uh, quickly, and they're going to make this a ball game. We'll see how this goes. But, <clears throat> excuse me. They just replayed uh, the one of the goals uh, that the McDonald scored in the first uh, the first half. So we had uh, Millie McDonald and uh, it was at Lydia Denon, right? Yep. With Lydia. the with the goal. So uh, and Sydney and then Davidson. Sydney Davidson with the third goal. And she certainly has been key this year to uh, the scoring prowess of the one, two, Bedford three, Bulldogs. As the game gets back underway and the fans uh, start to fill in a little more here as I see some Bishop Girton players out in front of us starting to scout out these two teams. 
Katane, near sideline, finds Denon. Natalie Denon, senior captain. Gets chase. Ball backhanded down to the 30. Mia Katane, stick handling, looking over her options. Beautifully far side up to Wolf. Wolf nicely up to Lydia Denon. Denon to Davidson. Davidson tries to go back to Denon. Does. Davidson again trying to find O'Donnell. O'Donnell from the scoot shooter circle goes to advance. Gets bodied by Nelson. And that's going to be a corner opportunity for the Bulldogs. By my count, that's uh, Bedford's fifth corner of the game. And as we've seen so many times, McDonald comes down to the goal line. That insert is instrumental in making this thing happen, Pete. You gotta be quick. You got about a three second advantage. McDonald gets a signal from the referee, goes high slot. Oh, ball just bounces missed. up over the stick of Kylie and comes up all the way to the 40. And Keene advances up into Bedford territory. Katain is there. Montagano trying to poke it away. But Sophia Miller nicely gathers the ball and advances up the field to number three, Tessa Pearson, who goes back outside to CeCe Whaler. CeCe Whaler trying to get into the shooter circle. But back comes McDonald and knocks the ball back out of bounds to slow the play down. Smart play by McDonald, allowing her teammates to get back and set up on defense. 11, Avery Allaire trying to get the ball in towards the shooter circle, but Bedford works their way up the field, but there's gonna be a foul called up against the Bedford Bulldogs and Keene will have a free hit. Avery Allaire will set up from about the 28 yard line as she brings it in. Big drive, right in the shooter circle. She finds her team teammate right on the goal step. Tempted shot, knocked down nicely by Mia Katane and cleared. What a goal scoring opportunity that was as Allaire ripped it in to Tessa Pearson. Pearson with beautiful stick work trying to control that ball. Just couldn't get a quality shot off. O'Donnell for Bedford, tries to advance up the field, gets another benefit of a call. O'Donnell up across the 50, up across the 40. Finds Kylie at the 30. Kylie tries a give and go. Just out of the reach of O'Donnell, but Montagano's there. O'Donnell turns and shoots real quick. Goes off a keen stick and out of bounds. That ball should come back out to the 25. But the referee calls it a free hit for Keene from the 16. Big drive up the field. Tessa Pearson charging up across the 50, up across the 40 with room. Poirier waiting. McDonald chops at it, gives it a jab, spins, pulls it out of harm's way, goes far side. Finds Grace Wolf far sideline. Grace Wolf sends it up to the 50, but it goes out of bounds off a of keen stick. Grace Wolf moves up quickly, finds Davidson. Davidson tries to one time it. Keen player Lair knocks it back out again. Wolf from the 35. Drives it in. Alaire is there. O'Donnell and Mantagano try to stop her. As Keen advances the ball up across the 50, but McDonald there, beautiful stick handling. Up the sideline, up across the 50 and the 40. Feeds it down to Lydia Denon, up across the 20 and the 15. Denon goes goal line, cuts back, tries to advance the ball in the shooter circle, and we're gonna have a free hit for the Bulldogs. Infraction occurred about 10 feet outside the shooter circle, so it's just the free hit. Ball to Montagano. Montagano trying to find O'Donnell. Nicely defended by Alaire for Keene as she knocks it down and kicks the ball out of the shooter circle. And now Keene will have a free hit. Tries to advance it up across the 20, but Davidson is there. Ball bounces up again, another free hit for Bedford. Montagano in traffic, three keen defenders there. She tries to go backhand, ball pops up in the air and it's gonna be a dangerous ball. Yeah. Orange, come on, 
later. Referee pauses there on the field, consulting with the other side. And they're going to call that a free hit for Bedford. Montagano will have it from about the 15. Montagano just outside the shooter circle. Montagano set. Montagano goes five. Moves, nicely defended by the Keen players as they knock it out far sideline. And Amelia McDonald will inbound from the 30. Kenna Nelson had knocked it down for Keen. Montagano goes backhand and goes out of bounds. And they're going to have a free hit from the 16. Sarah Weber drives it up the field, but Montagano is there. Stick handles between two defenders, slides it in the shooter circle. McKenna Nelson knocks it down and clears it out of the shooter circle, and the ball gets driven up far side of the field and out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. Brooke Poirier for Bedford will inbound. Tries to advance it up the sideline. Gets the benefit of the call. Tries to go low to O'Donnell. Allaire is there. Montagano jumps in, takes control of the ball. Tries to go back in in traffic. But Sophia Miller is there. Miller, nice backhand up the field. Brooke Poirier knocks it down. Tessa Pearson goes back and charges the other way as she tries to get up the field, but Amelia McDonald gets it, knocks it far sideline safely, just out of bounds. It's going to be a keen inbound, but that again slowed down the offensive pressure from Keen. Montagano tries to advance. Going to get the benefit of the call. Ball advance up the far sideline. Davidson wins the ball up across the 20. But Sarah Weber knocks it back down and is going to get a free hit. Back to Alaire. Alaire, big drive up the side of the field, but out of bounds. And you remember last game, Pete, against this Keene team, you know, Weber and Alaire, really defensive studs out there, um, you know, along with McKenna Nelson. Uh, these girls can certainly play and hold the fort down here. It's still 3-1, just about 6.45 left on the clock in the third quarter. Grace Wolf tries to advance it, can't. Miller, Sophia Miller up across 35. O'Donnell gives a lot of pressure and chase to slow her down, but not enough as the referee is gonna call a free hit for Miller. Miller from the 27. Big lift, gets knocked down nicely by Kylie. Kylie, quick outlet pass to Lydia Denon. Lydia Denon trying to find Davidson. Not enough on the stick, but Davidson recovers, pulls it her way, and they're gonna call a reach on that, and it's gonna be a free hit for Keene coming back the other way. From the 34, Alaire. Alaire, nice ball up to Miller, right in midfield. Miller tries to go backhand, tries a stick handle. Slides it up through the hole, but there's Amelia McDonald, knocks it down, tries to go back the other way, and Alaire knocks it down. Alaire, back up to Pearson. Pearson advances up to her teammate, Maya Stebbins. Excuse me, Maya Stebbins. That's going to be a foot call going Keene's way as they quickly get it in. Sophia Miller, spin move, in traffic. Nicely defended by McDonald as she poked it up to O'Donnell. O'Donnell pokes it up to Denon. Denon comes up across the 50. Denon, beautiful stick handle, throws the ball up the field. It gets all the way up to the 15. Bedford players give chase. Denon back in the mix. Knocked down quickly by number 15, Maddie Boodle. Maddie Boodle drives back the other way for Keene. 
Pearson with another big hack as the ball gets down to the 30 and McDonald is there. McDonald, beautiful pop move over the top of the stick of Maya Stebbins. And she's gonna get a free hit out of that. On the insert, clears it about 25 yards down the field. And up comes Sophia Miller. Sophia Miller for Keene. Up across the 30, up to the 25. Near sideline, tries a spin. Bedford defender swarm. Montagano clears it far side of the field. Davidson comes back with hustle. Quickly gets it up to Lydia Denon. Lydia Denon trying to find O'Donnell just out of her reach. O'Donnell gives chase, gets an angle. She's in on a one-on-one. -on -one. Tries to get around the keen player. Just can't quite pop it over her stick. And the ball comes back up the other way as number six, CC Whaler, tries to move up the field for Keene. Montagano with a quick spin trying to catch Denon. Well, I'd say so and far in this uh, this third quarter, Scott, has been a defensive battle on both sides, right? It certainly uh, has. The defense is just uh, on both sides is uh, stopping the ball, stopping the advance. Well, Miller. From midfield, tries to advance, and Montagano nicely knocks it down. O'Donnell gives chase again between three keen defenders. Tries to poke it around that, but can't get through that wall. Ella O'Keefe checks into the game. Ella O'Keefe at the 40, knocks the ball down, wins the play. Gets it up to Davidson, tries a one-timer, but she just misses. And the ball continues out of bounds, just left of the net. Should be a Bedford ball back at the 25. Ella O'Keefe making her presence known right away as she checks into the game. Montagano to O'Keefe. O'Keefe, far sideline, drives it back into the shooter circle. Ball bounces around. Sophia Miller for Keene gets it, tries to clear it, but Montagano with a big hustle comes back. Beautiful stick work, trying to feed O'Donnell, but Alaire is there. Alaire sends it up the field for Emma Potrovich. Potrovich out wide to Pearson. Pearson, far sideline, cuts across. McDonald slows her down. Brooke Poirier is there to pick up the ball and come back the other way as she goes far sideline to O'Keefe. O'Keefe crosses the ball up across the 50. Knocked down by the Keene player. Back the other way to Poirier. Poirier to O'Keefe again. This time O'Keefe gets all of it. Advances the ball up across the 30. O'Donnell there. Slides it in to Kylie. Just pops over Kylie's stick as Alaire tries to get it. But Kylie brings it back. Gets it back into the shooter circle. And Alaire once again tries to clear. Ball comes right in, into the shooter circle. O'Donnell moves left and right, goes backhand, into the goal mouth shot. And that's a score. score. Sydney Davidson on the rebound off O'Donnell's spin move. That's gonna be a 4-1 lead for the Bedford Bulldogs. With 1.47 left on the clock in the third quarter. Terrific, uh, terrific play by Sydney Davidson getting that rebound and <clears throat> knocking it in the net. Big shout out to uh, Dale uh, Bird back in the studio. Scott, we actually have studio support for championship play here, playoff play. So uh, great to have Dale lining up the uh, lining up the uh, the replays for us. That's a luxury for sure, Pete. 4-1 Bedford. A minute and a half left in the third quarter. Alaire for Keene. Big drive up the field. Gets knocked down there. O'Donnell works it up the field trying to catch Kylie. But it's going to be called the other way with a free hit for Keene. Alaire gets it over to Sophia Miller. Miller across the 15, across the 10. Two Bedford defenders get on her, but they're going to call third party on that. That's going to allow Keene to have another free hit. Alaire. Alaire, stick handles left and right, drives it in nicely. O'Donnell knocks it down quickly with one hand, finds Kylie on the outlet. Kylie with speed, goes back to O'Donnell. O'Donnell on the backhand, up across the 40, has Denon if she hurries, gets it up to Denon. Denon into the mouth of the net, just can't get a shot off. Beautifully defended by Sarah Weber for Keene as she hustled back and interrupted the play. That was another great offensive bid by the Bulldogs. Montagano from the 30, advances 
Finds Denon again. Denon on the one-timer towards wow. the net. Ball bounces up and in. Referee's going to say no goal. No goal. It'll remain 4-1. You have see to go back we, uh, to the replay to see, see what happened there. Here. Five seconds left on the clock. Katain smartly controls the ball. Finds Montagano at the 50 as time runs out in the third. That's the end of the third quarter. The 4-1 lead for the Bedford Bulldogs. Well, they were, <clears throat> were able to, to punch one through uh, the, the defense uh, of the Blackbirds. I think overall it was a, a defensive battle here in the third quarter. Bedford, uh, as I said, uh, got one through, but uh, watch this replay here. Nicely played by Kylie. Finds O'Donnell. O'Donnell charges up the field, looks around as to what she has for options. Sees Denon breaking. Ball just gets through, and Denon gets in towards that goal mouth. But there is number 20, Sarah Weber, with a wonderful defensive play as she back checked and stole that ball off of Denon's stick and saved this from becoming a 5 1 game. Uh, And with 30 seconds left on the clock, Bedford tried to get it back in. Montagano, quick bounce and shot off of Denon. Lydia Denon stick. I'm not sure what the call was. There. The ball might have been folks. hit outside the, might have been hit just outside the scoring circle. And because it kind of just rolled right in. It looked like Denon was inside. I just, mm. you know, the initial shot came from outside for sure, but yeah, okay. only the referees know. And that sometimes is uh, difficult. You know, these referees have a very difficult job out there. It is hard to call a field hockey game. A lot of intricacies, um, a lot of discretion left up to the referees. Um, and we have one of the best referees on the field in the state of New Hampshire, longtime coach. And and a uh, longtime referee out there, um, and uh, referee Gene certainly certainly knows field hockey and knows how to call a game. You know, the uh, Scott NHIAA uh, needs officials, and uh, becoming a high school sports official is uh, is very easy to do. Right, officiating allows. Uh, you to continue to be a role model by demonstrating qualities such as impartiality, fairness, and courage. High school sports officials help protect the integrity of the games. We love by teaching and enforcing the rules of play. New officials have an opportunity to make a difference in the communities right away. To learn more about becoming a high school sports official for NHIAA, go to their website, nhiaa.org. So 15 minutes on the clock as we head into the fourth quarter here in the first playoff game of the season. We've got uh, an, uh, two more games going on, I believe, r right around the same time for uh, these preliminary rounds. The first round, Winnicunnett's uh, uh, hosting Londonderry, and Concord is hosting Timberlane today. So uh, we'll be uh, we'll know the quarterfinal seedings uh, by uh, maybe a little after dinner time tonight. Certainly will. 15 minutes on the clock, and let's see if these Bulldogs can finish this out in advance, or if the Keen Blackbirds have something in store and can make a comeback. Ball advances up to the 50. Katain gives chase. Number six, CC Whaler spins. Finds Sophia Miller, but Montagano is right on top of that ball, knocks it down. They're gonna call a stick on stick there, and it's gonna be a free hit for the Keen Blackbirds. Allaire, Avery Allaire, sends it upfield to number six, CC Whaler. Whaler tries to get it in to her teammates. Finds Pearson, Pearson up in the shoot circle tries to go backhand nicely defended by McDonald and the ball scooped up by Poirier she knocks it down McDonald tries to get it as it's a bouncing ball in traffic and unfortunately for the Bulldogs it goes off a foot and for the fortune of the Keen Blackbirds they're gonna get a corner I believe this is Keen's second corner of the game Tessa Pearson on the goal line as the Bedford defenders get set, put on their protective gear. Referee waiting to make the call. Allows for the inbound. Pearson brings it up top. 
Big shot just left of the net. Just left. As McKenna Nelson. When you look at the replay here, this is how you want a corner to go. You, if you count the seconds, you got about one, two, three seconds. You got to get that shot off. That first shot just went wide. Yep. If that was on great net, effort, that would have been a goal. Denon tries to clear it up the near sideline, but number 24 Ella Rice is there for the Blackbirds. Whaler back in for Sophia Miller. Miller tries to advance, O'Donnell falls down, and because of that, they're gonna get awarded a corner. <laughs> Bedford defenders get their masks on. About 12.40 left in the clock, 4-1 lead for Bedford. Tessa Pearson, senior forward for Keene, inserts. In it comes, Whaler tries to get to Nelson. Nelson tries to give it back to Whaler, but it goes off the foot of Mia Katane, and that's gonna be another corner try for Keene. About 12.10 left on the clock. I'll tell you, if Keen can put it in here, Pete, we have a whole other ball game. Oh, and I'm sure that's what they're thinking, right? There's plenty of time left on the clock. And Pearson to Nelson. Nelson, big rip. Shot off the leg of Catan. Looks like it hit a pad as she's not limping. O'Donnell pursues it as Alaire tries to circle in, but O'Donnell steals it, gets it up to Denon. Denon at the 30, up to the 35, far sideline. Spins back around, finds O'Donnell. O'Donnell up across the 45 and the 50. Nicely out to Maddie Kylie. Kylie tries to give it back. O'Donnell pokes it ahead. Alaire's there, spins, big drive up the field as she clears it all the way up to the 40. Brooke Poirier knocks it down. Down. Goes left, then right. Finds Montagano. Sophia Miller intercepts, comes charging back up the field. Tries to circle in and around Katane. Up to the 25, runs out of room as Denon is on her. On the near sideline. Back pass to number 24, Ella Rice. Rice to Alaire. Finds Whaler. Whaler into the shooter circle. Montagano steals the ball away. Ball pack pops back up again. Miller trying to find space. Goes backhand. McDonald knocks it out of harm's way. Clears it all the way near sideline. Ball goes out of bounds. Number 24, Ella Rice on the inbound. Nelson, big drive. Nicely knocked down by Wolf. Wolf sends it far out in front of Davidson. Davidson just can't chase it down as a keen player gets it, tries to go goal line, and nobody there as it goes out of bounds. That'll be a free hit coming back out to the 16 for the Bedford Bulldogs. Well, Keene's certainly surging here, Pete, some, some uh, showing some offense. Bedford a little back on their heels as they try to clear. Nelson knocks it back down again. Far sideline, tries to go backhand. Alaire steps up, O'Donnell pops it up in the air and up to the 40. It's gonna be a free hit for Bedford from about the 40 yard line. Poirier drops the ball, looks for support, smartly back to McDonald. McDonald looking to switch fields, quickly over to Katane, nicely passed. Katane with a 360 as she comes sideline, tries to advance it up to Kylie, but just doesn't get all of it and it knocks out of bounds. As Keen brings it back in, number five, Olive Thatcher. Drives it hard, far side of the field, but Grace Wolf is there. She scoops it up at the 20. Goes far sideline, ball goes out of bounds off a Keen player stick and it's gonna be a free insert for Bedford. Brooke Poirier in traffic. Pearson turns, shoots it downfield, but McDonald's there. Smartly played right onto the stick of Grace Wolf. And Grace Wolf is gonna call, get a foul called in the favor of the Bulldogs as McDonald will have a free hit. McDonald looking for an opening, tries to find O'Donnell, and that gets knocked down 
as Keen comes roaring back the other way. Number 21, Sophia Miller into the shooter circle, goes backhand with a lift, beautifully knocked down by Amelia McDonald. What a sharp defensive play as she clears it, but Keen gets it right back in. O'Donnell, again, ball goes back out and away we go, back and forth. Alaire trying to knock it in. Ball goes off the back of the leg of Montagano. It's gonna be a free hit for Keen. Alaire travels the five yards, tries to drive it in the circle. Montagano knocks it down, goes far side, trying to find Davidson. Ball bounces over her, sticking out of bounds. Keen will send it down low, trying to catch Pearson. Pearson gives a hack at it. That's going to be a stick-on-stick -stick call. Free hit for Bedford as Grace Wolf tries to advance. So Pearson gets it back, tries a big rip. It bounces back up in the air, and it's going to be a dangerous hit, and it's going to be a free hit for the Bulldogs. Brooke Poirier from the 20. Finds Montagano. Montagano, big pass. Near side of the field, finds Kylie. Kylie to the 45, trying to send O'Donnell. Just doesn't get up. Beautifully stick handled by Alaire. But O'Donnell knocks it down. They're going to call a third party with the two defenders working Alaire. She did a nice job defending that play. Alaire, back the other way. Finds number four, Paige Davis. Miller from the 50. Miller up across the 40, one-handed. Up across the 30, trying to stick handle. Gets up and one-on-one -on -one with McDonald. Lifts the ball, tries to carry it, does. McDonald jabs at it, but Miller smooth on the play. Gets the benefit of a corner call. And Keene will have another corner and an offensive chance with 6.30 just about left on the clock. Fourth quarter, 4-1 four Bedford. We saw some terrific uh, stick handling by Keen uh, here in the last uh, minute. And uh, now they're, they've got their fifth corner of the game. Keen could use a goal right about now. Pearson on the goal line, inserts up to Whaler. Whaler back to her teammate into the goal mouth. He tried on the spin around. Paige Davis there on the backhand. She just couldn't get it on net. And the ball goes wide. And Bedford will come out to the 16 with the free hit. Just under six minutes left here in the fourth quarter. Pearson intercepts. Pearson, big drive, gets it in towards the goal mouth. McDonald nicely knocks it down and clears. And back Keen comes. Miller trying to spin. O'Donnell block tackle, but they're going to call third party on that again. And Miller's going to have a free hit from the top of the circle just outside of it. Miller back to Alaire. Alaire spins, going left, tries to go back right, gets a nice shot off towards the net. Ball bounces around and goes out of bounds off a keen player stick. And ball's gonna come back out, excuse me, off a Bedford player stick. That ball should come back out to the 25 and be Keene's ball. And it is, Alaire. Five minutes left on the clock. Travels five. Takes a look. Passes it up to McKenna Nelson. Nelson into the shooter circle. Backhand, nice shot, right pad save. Beautiful save by Addie Wolfinger yeah, for the a, Bedford Bulldogs. That was a key play right there. Yeah, if you watch the replay here, Scott, she just uh, she got the full pad on it and just pushed it right out. Beautiful kick save. However, for you at home, when the ball goes up in the air off the goalie's pad and comes up above the waist, they get awarded a corner. But that stopped the goal as Pearson inserts to Miller. Miller, wicked backhand shot, beautifully done. Ball up in the air, and you can't score off the corner unless it hits that 18-inch backboard. So if you look at this on replay, yeah. Was that the first shot or the second shot? Because I think the, I know the first shot, you can't go in the air. Yep. It has to hit the backboard. It really has to be a flick. If it's a flick, it's allowed, but that wasn't a flick. She wound up on that one, so she's pretty lucky there. Just trying to interpret the referee's call on the field. She, you know, 
signaled with her hands about right. 18 inches wide. I think she was trying to indicate you got to hit the backboard as Alaire in the shooter circle tries to look for space. Bedford is back. Ball in towards the net. Quick shot on net. Addie Wilfiger is there. Kick save again. But ball pops up and we're going to get another corner call going Keene's way. But Wolfiger again quickly has kept the ball out of the back of the net on two consecutive back-to-back -back plays. Nicely played by Wolfiger. Everyone's contributing here for Bedford tonight as Pearson inserts, comes up to Miller. Miller, stick handling, tries to get a shot off. Dangerous stick, Dangerous stick. as she takes a whack at it and doesn't connect. So that's going to be a free hit for Bedford from about the 15-yard line. McDonald will go smartly out far sideline to Poirier. Poirier nicely handles it, continues far sideline, finds Grace Wolf. Grace Wolf gets it up to Davidson. And Davidson just doesn't hold on. It goes out of bounds. Ball back in play. A lair. As Montagano knocks it down, tries to send O'Donnell just out of her reach. Far sideline, Lydia Denon spins, trying to advance the ball up the field, but Whaler is there. Whaler back to Miller. Miller tries a stick handle. Bedford, really stingy defensive play as they are right on top of the ball carrier every single time Keene tries to come up the field. Nice drive by Miller, but nobody's there. That goes out of bounds, baseline. Well, if you're Keene, uh, you're doing everything you should be doing. You're keeping the ball in the Bedford zone. You're in the circle a lot. But uh, Bedford has an, an answer for just about everything Keene's doing right now. Katane back to McDonald. McDonald near sideline to Denon. Denon tries to advance, goes off the stick of number five, all of Thatcher. Katane tries to advance it up the field, knocked down by number five, Thatcher, for Keene. She wins a benefit of a call from the 30, but Montagano knocks that down. Miller grabs it, stick handles between two Bedford players, nicely defended by Katane. Tries to advance it up the field, but just misses. Ball in a shooter circle. Ball pops up in the air. It's going to be a dangerous play. And Keene's going to be awarded a corner with 50 seconds left on the clock. A 4-1 lead for Bedford. Pearson has the ball, They're switching up the play. All of Thatcher will go goal line. About 30 seconds left on the clock. As Thatcher inserts. Brings it up to Whaler. Shot off in the goal mouth. Whaler again, McDonald is there, goes to clear it, goes off the foot of her teammate and it's going to be one more corner as this will finish out the game and time will run off the clock. But that corner will be played out. 4-1 lead for Bedford. Come on, why the crash? Yes. And it looks like the keen I think they're going to just uh, end the game right there. The, going to call right. it there. Exactly. Well, there you have it. A great opening victory for the Bedford Bulldogs, a 4-1 game. And you got to give credit, certainly, to these keen Blackbirds in the season that they've had to get into the playoffs this year. That is a good team. They've got plenty of good players. And looking down that roster, not a lot of 12th graders on that roster. So they certainly have a bright future in that program. That's right. Uh, keen and, and Keene has a uh, uh, terrific feeder program into the, into the high school uh, through uh, Plymouth. State, if I recall, no, excuse me, Keene State, State. and uh, uh, some of these kids have been playing 
uh, field hockey together, as the coach said, since uh, they were in first and second grade. So they, they have a really bright future. They've made the playoffs in the past. Uh, they won't make it today, uh, and their, their season will end. Bedford now heads to Dover, and we know how difficult that can be. We had a terrific uh, Dover game here uh, earlier in October. It was an odd game. Uh, we got into the first quarter, and the, and the game ended due to weather, and then we picked it back up uh, over the weekend. Uh, we tied them 2-2, and uh, we're very, uh, very, uh, I think, fortunate to, uh, to to match the best team in uh, in D1 right now, which is Dover. So they head to Dover on Friday, uh, which will be a very interesting game. It's on grass, and uh, and that's that's the Achilles heel. And to add to the story there, Pete, uh, Dover is a team that knocked Bedford out of the playoffs last year. That's correct. So it's a rematch. <laughs> and it was you know yep. one heck of a game um, out there, and it came down to, believe it or not, corner plays. You know, some some key and critical calls late in the game that led to corners, uh, you know, in the benefit of Dover, and they were able to capitalize on those chances to close out that yes, game. Yes, they were. Um, and I'll tell you what, we're, uh, we're in for a treat. Audrey Carter out there. Yes, indeed. Headed to UMass Lowell, Division One field hockey program, top 25 team in the country. Um, she is a treat to watch. She's one of uh, USA Today's top 50 athletes to watch, uh, full of skill, and they've got a lot of players on that team to include junior offensive player Aaron Lynch and Anderson, a lot of firepower. Um, Bedford is going to be up for a challenge. So Friday night. Yeah, Friday. October. It's actually Friday afternoon. They, they're playing early. Um, yeah, so that real, that will wrap up uh, Bedford uh, High School uh, field hockey division one, the prelims. Bedford comes out ahead four to one. They're off to Dover. Big thanks to Bill, Bill Jennings, station manager, Dale Bird, working the uh, controls back at the station. And of course, Andrew Fenn, who got everything set up for us uh, earlier today. Uh, thanks again for supporting uh, Bedford field hockey and Bedford sports. Uh, for uh, Scott O'Donnell, I'm Pete McDonald, and we'll see you the next time.